Princess Mononoke. It's the last movie I watched. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of It's the Last Movie I Watched, featuring me, Daniel Kessner, who is the last one to have watched that movie. So it's a show where I look at the movies that I'm watching, why I'm watching them, and kind of give you a little insight into the world of Danielle's movie habits. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about Princess Mononoke. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, I can imagine there's a reason behind it. Either A, you see that it's animated and you shy away from it, or B, you're not a big fan of Japanese-style animation. Well, to be perfectly honest, once upon a time, I wasn't either. Me, you know, I... The first Japanese animated movie I think I really watched was one of Miyazaki's. It might have been Spirited Away. But once I watched that one and saw that pretty much every other one of his movies is in the IMDb Top 250 somewhere, I had to, you know, go through them and watch them all. And first run through, wasn't a big fan. Now, I can't get enough of them. Now, I am like a diehard Miyazaki fan. And that's because when you actually watch these movies, you see just how incredibly amazing this guy is as a director and for the most part his movies are I wouldn't say they are kids movies but they definitely are friendly enough for kids to be watching Princess Mononoke on the other hand is not so much a kid friendly movie in fact this is probably his most intense movie to date and since he probably won't be making many more movies after this um, or after his last one, The Wind Rises, um, it will probably stand as his most intense movie ever. Um, so to give you kind of a little bit of background, if you haven't seen it, it's basically about a... It takes place in Japan, allegedly. It takes place in... Um, yeah, it does take place in Japan. Um, no allegedly about it. Um, in sort of a time where, you know, samurai were still part of the landscape, starting to see industrialization a little bit more, so... Japan is not quite in the modern era, but we're starting to see that progression towards it. But it's still a time where there are spirits, and that's something that Miyazaki does incredibly well, is incorporate the spiritual realm of Japanese culture into his movies, and Princess Mononoke is a great example of where he does that. And basically what it, what it starts with is there's a a god or demon, you're not really sure you assume it's a demon just like the way it looks that attacks this village and one of the warriors in the village a man named Ashitaki I think I got that right <laughs> he basically defends the village but in the process of doing so and slaying this demon he ends up being cursed and so he gets you know the demon touches him and ends up cursing him and so in order to lift the curse he has to go find the, sp the spirit of the forest to basically lift the, you know give him you know the blessing to lift this curse and in when he goes out to seek the spirit of the forest he runs into this sort of civil war that's happening between these two warring you know warlords and he meets a monk along the way who is kind of a shady character himself and is actually the monk is trying to also find the spirit of the forest but for a very different reason and when he goes to a place called Iron Town, which is where you know one of these warring clans um, is kind of that's where they're you know building their guns and you know their muskets and they're kind of taking hold of this you know industrialization of their country. Um, he finds that they're actually you know fighting with the creatures in the forest, and namely this this woman in the forest whose name is San, who is basically the daughter of a wolf, but she is a human being who is kind of this, like, warrior for nature. Now, if you don't know much about Miyazaki, one thing is very true about his stories. He is extremely focused on environmentalism and conservation. He's a big proponent of it, and this movie is an excellent example of that because the whole concept behind it is that, you know, these people are tearing down the forests and mining their, you know, the resources and just basically destroying the natural world for their own you know, industrialization, their own gain on that part, and the characters, you know, Ashitaki and San are, you know, fighting back against this, they're, you know, challenging that, saying that, you know, the goodness in the world comes from the earth, the goodness comes from trees and, you know, the, the creatures of the woods, you know, and to destroy the spirit of the forest is, is this, you know, ultimate sin, and as the movie progresses, when they do actually 
encounter the spirit of the forest and, you know, attack it, you know, it becomes this, you know, gigantic monster that kills people just by touching them. And so it's this kind of, and uh, so much of the emotion comes from this, you know, hatred that is soothing from these, you know, seething from these creatures in the forest, from people tearing the nature down, destroying the natural world. And that, that hatred is actually blinding them to, you know, it's just blinding them with rage and turning these, you know, gentle, once gentle creatures into demons. It has an extremely strong environmental message, kind of along the same lines of Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which incidentally was the first movie I wanted to do for the last movie I watched, but just didn't happen at the time. Um, I'm sure I'll watch it again very soon because it's, that is another fantastic movie. But why did I choose this one? Well, of course it was Sunday, so I have to watch something animated on Sunday. That's just the way things are. But there's something about this movie that is just utterly captivating. It's it's violent. That's That's one thing that you get from this movie that you don't necessarily get in any other Miyazaki movie, at least not to this extent. I mean, this is really a violent movie. But there's something about the intensity of his characters. You know, he always has, you know, a goofball character, you know, somebody who is, you know, maybe confident but goofy or somebody who's, you know, very just like, you know, kind of clownish. He always has somebody like that. So there is at least some comment. It's not like a overly somber movie. This is not Grave of the Fireflies, but it is very, it is a very stern, you know, serious movie because I think, you know, it, it has such a respect for the story it's trying to tell. And when you, when you get into the story and you start following this character, Ashitaki, you know, you're rooting for him to succeed because you can see that, you know, it is this, you know, personal journey for him. It's not just that he's trying to lift this curse off of him, but it's helping the, you know, the earth and nature along the way. And, you know, he falls in love with San, who is, you know, this freedom fighter sort of character who's just, you know, out there, you know, challenging the industrial machine that is just tearing their land apart. And you get this, this very strong emotional core to this movie that the emotions in this movie are extremely powerful not to mention the animation is fantastic it's you know vintage Miyazaki that's that's all I can say is this is this is that kind of the way that his style isn't maybe the most distinct but he he does it with such respect for his story and for nature and for the characters and everything. Miyazaki is just a brilliant director and it's sad to think that he may never direct another full length feature, but if Wind Rises is the last one he gives us, well, we're we're pretty much thankful for that because it was a fantastic movie itself. Now, die hard Miyazaki fans are probably going to, you know, shun me for this one, but when I watched this, I did have to watch it with dubbing which it's a little bit easier with animated movies, but still I had to watch the dubbed version because I can't always sit and just watch a subtitled movie. I don't, I mean, I'm always doing other stuff too. But I will say that the the um, Disney dubbing of this movie um, was actually pretty good. Um, they had Billy Crudup do um, the voice of Ashitaki. Claire Danes was San. Um, Mini Driver played one of the warlords. Jillian Anderson played the wolf mother, and she did a great job. Billy Bob Thornton played the creepy monk guy. So, I mean, they did a really good job um, getting the um, American cast for it. So, um, yeah, people might not like that, but I'm not ashamed to admit it either. So, Princess Mononoke, highly recommend it. Do watch it. If you haven't, um, definitely check it out, because um, this is the last movie I watched. And it certainly won't be the last Miyazaki I watch for a while. So thanks for watching. See you next time.